Hello, welcome back. Let's go ahead and get started in lesson four of module two, which is all about your flipped classroom home. And that's what I really call it. And I'll explain what I mean by that. So in this lesson, you will learn about the importance of making one spot, one place for students to access your videos. And that really is of course that's online and that's what i mean here by a place or a home for all your flipped classroom videos that could be your website your learning management system in my case it was always a google site i'll recommend the tools that i have used namely a google site and then give you the basic framework you can input into your google site or your website before you make your flipped videos so let's go ahead and get started before we talk about the specific tools, I want to make a quick note about YouTube. My process has always been that once I record and edit in Camtasia and produce that video, I upload the video straight to YouTube. I don't even download it as an MP4 file first. Again, I upload it straight to YouTube. And that's another great thing about Camtasia. So make sure that in lesson two of this module, in that PDF guide, you get the link and the discount code to grab that Camtasia. It's so awesome. However, and here's what I want you to take a note of. I never gave my students the direct link to my YouTube videos. There's just too much that could happen if my students are watching my videos straight from YouTube. And I don't think I need to explain all the bad that could happen if I assign something on YouTube for my students to watch at home when mom possibly walks by and there's some pretty ridiculous ads in the sidebar. Get what I mean? No, I'm not doing that. This is why, along with some other reasons, I make a quote, home of sorts for my students to access my videos because it's not in YouTube. Now, they are still YouTube videos and I still get the views, although that's not really important, but just to answer that question if you were to have that question. But I embed them somewhere outside of YouTube using the link that YouTube provides. It's so easy, so stick with me. Another thing is that even though my students never watch my videos straight from my YouTube, there is always, without a doubt, always where I put my videos first. Now, I'm going to make two recommendations in this lesson, but for both of them, my videos were always in YouTube first. All right, now we're gonna talk about YouTube more in the next lesson, but for now, we're done talking about that. And that's why I made it zero, <laughs> insight zero in this slide. So let's talk about my first recommendation, tools that have embedded formative assessments. Now, before we get too far, you'll need to make a decision here. As far as tools go with formative assessment, play pause it is what I recommend. Please know that you may change your mind about this decision you make, and that's okay. But let me tell you about this important decision. There are fantastic tools out there that allow you to embed questions in your videos, in any YouTube videos. And I'm gonna show you some examples that students must answer before they move on in the video. You then see those results. You see your students' answers both live and after they're finished. I use a tool called PlayPosit for this. I used it in my American History class, which was an on or below level class where I did the in-class flip, not the traditional videos at home flip. I mention this here because if you are all in on using a tool like this, this lesson really is slightly unnecessary other than to go into PlayPosit and learn about the tool. You can upload any video from YouTube, add questions to it, then students log on to the site, go to the assigned video, and watch an answer. You'll see their answers. I'm not going to go too much farther into teaching about this tool here because we want to focus on the idea of having a home. And I focus solely on this tool and ones like it in, future, in a future module where we talk about formatively assessing your students. So really my true recommendation for a home and my only one, because you have so many decisions and really your to-do list is only getting longer, right? So I want you to have something that is so easy, just so easy to create and go. 
If you are not sold on having to use one of the tools I described on the previous slide, like PlayPosit, then I highly recommend making a Google site or something similar to it. And I really don't know of anything else similar to it. <laughs> At least nothing that is free. So Google sites are just so easy to use. Let me show you mine and how I used it in my flipped classroom. So I'm going to back out of my um, slideshow here and go to my Google Drive. So for those of you in Google Drive, what you'll do is just click on new. You'll hover over more and click on Google Sites. And it takes you to your very own Google site that you can name and create a name for the web page. It'll be sites.google.com slash and then whatever link you give it. So at the beginning of the year, and I'll talk about this more in a later module, I have students bookmark that site right away. I give them a shortened URL or a QR code on day like two of the class and they bookmark that both on their phone and on their school distributed Chromebook because we are one-to-one -one or on whatever device that they will use. The features in this are just so amazing. So again, I'm gonna spend some time here kind of teaching you about this. First though, I wanna show you what my AP Psychology Google site looks like to show you the possibilities. This is the editing side of things. So let me show you the live side. It doesn't look much different and that's what I love about it, right? This is the live version of what my students or anybody else on the World Wide Web would see. And then this is the editing version. Again, that's why I love it because it's so easy to see exactly what everyone else is going to see. And then over here in the side right hand like panel is all of your magic. That's where all your power is held. So in the live version, you'll see up top, we've got the home where I made subcategories of syllabus and quick links. So in the syllabus, you'll see that they will have access to my live syllabus and it's loading here, but here's my little syllabus. And then I give them, um, these are Google Forms where I give them their student survey, their parent survey, their course contract for the year, all of the stuff really for the beginning of the year and quick links. So anything that we use in the class that I want them to quickly be able to access. And then up top, you have all of our units, all of them. Now, you won't need to include something like this up at the top because um, I have a lot of people wanting to access my materials and I kind of guide them where they can do that better. Okay, so what my students will be able to see, because each one of these is a Google slide or a Google Doc that I give only my students access to. And that's the other thing. It's so much safer. Google Slides using, well, I should say Google Sites using slides and docs is so much safer because you can control who can and can't see it. So I give them access to like our daily slide, which just kind of shows them what we're doing day in and day out. They have their game board, which I can explain to you elsewhere, um, their reading guides. And then we scroll down and I have by topic, the YouTube video that they can click and watch right here in this tool. So this is a good way to show you one of my flip videos. I kind of start by giving them um, a glimpse of here's the video notes that you should be writing down on and then me in the bottom right hand corner. So they go down and you see all of my videos are just easily dragged and dropped in there. Now here's a video that's not mine that I give them access to but we watch in class. And then here are the education created videos that I put on my Google site. Here's then their practices I give them access to and the Jeopardy review game that we play before we um, take our test. So again, this is just so awesome. You can change the title, you can change the background image, just tons of things. So let me quickly show you some things that you'll wanna be able to do. Now, I'm not gonna show you everything, so I totally encourage you to get in here and explore this tool. So the insert, well, let me back up here. You have some themes that you can choose from and change. That's a quick, really easy decision of one click and bam, the theme is changed for everything. Pages then is where I want you to spend some time now. Create a page for every single unit of study for your entire course. And that's what will show up in the top tab up here. That's the framework that I would like you to spend some time creating now.
But then let me show you what you're going to do once you're in one of the um, units. Like, so I'll go to my first unit here, which I showed you the unit guide for a while back. And um, so I clicked on that page, I guess you could say, and then you can insert a text box. And that's all that is. So I inserted a text box. I made wrote out the text, right? And then I highlighted it and linked it to the Google Doc that are those items. Now these up here, these are Google Docs, right? They're Google Slides, but instead of just linking them, I clicked on insert and I scroll down and I click on slides. And that brings up for me all of my more recent, but really all of my available Google Slides. So darn awesome. Because you just plug it in there, you change the sizing of it, right? Like I can drag and change the sizing of these and bam. Now the last thing I wanna show you is how to insert your YouTube video. So again, you click on insert, you scroll down, you click on YouTube, you put the link in there that's provided to you by YouTube when you upload your video and voila, it's done. I seriously, this is just so amazing. Now you won't be in the phase of uploading your YouTube videos yet because you don't have your YouTube videos made. So really where I want you to spend some time right now is first, creating your Google site and then pages and just creating each of the units, a page for each of your units of your course. So I'm going to get a little repetitive here, but I want to make sure that this is clear for you before you create and then put your videos into your Google site. I want you to build that framework of your course, which is what we just showed you. Make a tab for each of your units and include a title and you can even include an image for each one. It's also super easy to put, like I just said, a background image in the header. You just click on the little edit icon of the um, header up at the top and bam, you can put in a color or an image. And that's it for lesson four. So in this lesson, you learned about the importance of making that one place for your students because you don't want to be sending them to YouTube. My recommendations for what tool to use and then the basic framework that you can be inputting now before you even make your flipped videos. And I hope that you have found this simple yet helpful. So again, Again, I'm being repetitive here, but I want to make sure you get it. Take action now. Create a YouTube account and channel if you haven't yet. Decide on your flipped classroom home, which I'm recommending being a Google site, and learn about that home and input that framework that's ready to go for after you have your flip videos created. Now, in the next lesson, we're going to go a little beyond um, just planning for your flip videos. And I want to fill you in on a few things that I wish that I had been aware of before I started my flipping journey. So go ahead and click next below and catch that last lesson of module two.